Hi, it's Lauren. Welcome back to my craft room. I'm super excited because it's that time of the season for a Lawn Fawn Fans video hop, our spring hop today. It's also sponsored by Lawn Fawn, which is super exciting. So make sure you check out my description down below to get all of the details on the hop and giveaway. You'll also find who to hop to next. So I'm quickly going through my supplies today. As you can see, I've already stamped and colored all of my images. I'm using Very Rainy Day and the Here For You Bear Freebie. I'm also using my stitched rainbow lawn cuts and I use my scrapbook.com cardstock packs to cut those out. I also die cut the clouds from that set using some pixie dust sparkle cardstock and I've already cut out all of my pieces except for my banner sentiment out of some sturdy wide cardstock from the double slider surprise lawn cut set and I'm also going to be using some of my grassy stencils from Lawn Fawn the hillside as well as the straight stencil off camera. So for today's video I am creating a three scene panel card I guess you could say on my double slider. I'm going to have my two rectangles which will be the left and right side of my double slider the actual panels that you pull as well as the center front cover of our double slider. So I'm just going to show how I did one. I did two different scenes on these pull panel die cuts and then another scene on one of my pocket pieces. So um, it's the same thing every time, basically, so I'm just going to show it once. What I've done is I've used my anti-static powder to cover my panel, and then using Versamark and some white embossing powder, I'm adding raindrops from the Very Rainy Day set. So I use the cluster of the um, raindrops as well as the singular large raindrop to fill in any of the spots I kind of missed while stamping the cluster of raindrops. And once I was happy with how many I had on there, I went ahead and used my heat embossing gun to melt that powder down. And then I use a little Swiffer cloth just to clean up any of the excess powder from the anti-static powder tool before I start my distressing. Now I wanted to keep my panels flat because I didn't want anything to snag while the gift receiver, the card receiver, is playing with the panels. So I'm going to do stenciling instead of die cutting. So I used my hillside grassy stencil. I didn't want it to be straight across. I wanted to be a little bit of movement in the grass. So I used mowed lawn as the grass part of my stencil. And I'm just using my little staycation here because it's me uh, metallic and magnetic and I can use these magnets to hold everything in place. And once I'm done coloring in the grass with that mode lawn distress oxide, I'm getting out stormy sky, which is a blue, well, stormy looking blue sky color. And it's perfect because I've created raindrops using the white embossing powder and I'm doing an embossed resist technique. Once I was happy with the coverage of the ink, I'm just using my distress sprayer to spray on some water and a paper towel to pick up that excess water and ink. And I thought I had some areas with a little less ink than I wanted so I just brought the brush back out and using whatever ink was left on the brush just added a little more color back in and then I went ahead and brought out that paper towel again and rubbed off the ink from my raindrops. Now the only thing is I'm not using like watercolor cardstock. I'm just using 110 pound cover stock and sometimes I was a little too anxious and started rubbing off the ink off of my raindrops before the paper was dry. So I created a couple spots, especially on my cover panel here, where I kind of rubbed away the paper and it's not as pretty looking. But I grabbed my die cuts and where I was gonna figure out the placement of everything and I'm gonna cover my little boo-boo. So I'm moving forward with it and it's totally fine. At the end, you really can't see anything that made me sad <laughs> in this moment. So now I'm gonna start putting together the double slider. So I'm grabbing my little doggy bags. I keep one in my drawer and I just cut it apart when I make double sliders. And I'm trimming it to fit the width of that inner piece of the double slider. Now I kind of guessed how 
wide to cut it and it was a little wide in one spot so I will trim it down and then I will notice that I have a little bit of a extra piece hanging off and I don't want anything to get snagged so I will trim that off as well. It's such a thin plastic it probably is not a big deal but definitely didn't want to do anything that would create issues in the card. So once I have the width figure out, I'm going to add a piece of double-sided adhesive. This is strong, sturdy adhesive from scrapbook.com, and I'm adding that to the edge of my little dog poo bag, <laughs> and I'm going to peel off the release paper, and then I'm going to use my little bone folder just to help keep that dog place or dog bag in place because I kept bumping it and getting my fingers stuck on the glue as you can see um so i'm just using that to hold one side of the dog bag and then i am pulling it taut but not too tight because if it's too tight it won't rotate around the inner mechanism so once that is nice and adhered and it's moving freely it's not too tight not too loose i went ahead and trimmed off the excess of the bag now I'm going to adhere my two panels. So uh, the one in the back, you're gluing to the front side of the panel. So I added some adhesive to that same crease or where the two pieces of the plastic bag overlap. I can't think of what I want to call that. The seam. There it is. The seam. So I'm adding some adhesive over that seam and I'm placing it on the back side and I'm adhering it to the left side on the front of my back panel that will be on the right side. I hope that made sense. And now I'm adding the same adhesive, this time on the front side to the right, and this will adhere to the back of the front left panel. So that way both our panels are facing outward. So when you pull them apart, the card receiver will see both panels. I may have done this in the past when I first got this die and had my panels facing outwards and Unless you want to see things on both sides, don't do that. <laughs> and now I'm going to fold in the sides of my, um, the outside, the kind of the envelope of this double slider. And I'm just using my score pal to help me get that nice and um, scored nicely and bent over nicely. And now I'm going to use my eighth inch, um, adhesive tape and I've added it to those flaps for those outside pieces and then I will also need to add it to the inner mechanism. So I'm going to line up the outside first. So I'm pulling the release paper off of one of those flaps. I'm lining them up to each other on my mat and then folding over that flap and then using my scoring tool to help make sure that that is nice and secured. Now I'm going to add that eighth of an inch tape again to all four sides of those little thin strips along the top and bottom of the inner mechanism. I'm going to pull off the release paper for the two on the back side and I'm going to center that inside of my uh, double slider little envelope thing, the pocket, and I'm going to press down and then I should have repeated that process <laughs> on the front side, but I didn't. I just went ahead and closed it up. I didn't even realize that I did this until I was editing the video. So you should have pulled up the two on the other side and then laid the flap down on the bottom, pulled off that release paper, and then fully enclosed it. But it's okay, it's still working. It just isn't as secure in the top and bottom of that pocket. So now I'm going to go ahead and add all of my images. Here I have everything lined up how I want it to go. I like to do kind of a dry run before I glue everything down and make sure I'm happy with the placement of all of my images and die cuts. Now I'm using wet glue to adhere all of the images to the left and right inner panels. I don't want anything popped up because I didn't want anything to get snagged while trying to go in and out of that double slider pocket envelope part. <laughs> Now for the rainbow, it's going to go a little off the top, which is totally fine. It's very cute and I love it and I'm using it to hide all of those accidental boo-boos from rubbing away paper while trying to clean up my ink. And I'm going to glue my clouds directly to my rainbow. I'm going to try to use my grid mat to try to keep my rainbow as straight and my clouds as straight as possible. It's not perfect, but I think it looks really good. And then I'm going to use foam squares to adhere this to my pocket. 
So once I kind of figure out where I want it to go, I know where I need to add foam squares. I'm gonna use my really thin foam squares from Scrapbook Adhesive to cover the part of the rainbow, and then a little bit thicker adhesive, foam adhesives behind the clouds because the clouds um, are a little bit taller because there's two layers of paper for that rainbow. I have my five colors and I glued them to the white rainbow uh, die cut. So it's a little thick. So I wanted to make sure there was good stability. So I use a slightly thicker foam adhesive behind the clouds. Now I'm gluing on those two little splash spots directly to the card. And then I'm popping up with those same slightly thicker foam adhesives, my little bear in the middle, like it, he just jumped into those puddles. And here I have my three little scenes of my bear jumping around and making a splash. So I decided to use the Make a Splash Sentiment. I emboss it in white embossing powder onto some Pear Blossom Press black sentiment stock. And it's like an amazing black sentiment stock to, or card stock to stamp your sentiments and emboss them. And I'm using a foam square, again, the thin one to adhere that to my rainbow. Now, when I stamped make a splash and embossed it, I realized it was slightly off centered. So I added an exclamation point, which is actually the upside down I from the I love you sentiment from the same um, very a rainy day stamp set. So that's where I got my exclamation point. Now I have these clear little bubbles that I'm adding to cover again a couple extra spots that may have had some boo-boos just to add a little bit more fun to the rain and then I grabbed my white gel pen and added some little highlights to my images and that will wrap up the card. Thanks for sticking with me for this creation. I hope you enjoy the hop. Check out the link below for the next person to hop to. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you'll click like, and if you're new here, I hope you'll subscribe and come back. As always, you can find everything I use down below in the description box. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Bye.